Okay, there we go. Happy Thor's Day to you. <laughs> How are you doing? Just having some morning coffee and extenuating thoughts on Twin Flame. Yay! I actually, um, I was starting to have like a, um, not really a conversation with Spirit, but more like um, an elaboration on my perception of Twin th Twin Flames with myself. And I got confirmation the other day. I kind of wanted to share because it totally like makes sense to me. Like I'm seeing like the broader picture there. So I thought I'd share it. It might be helpful. <laughs> so um, I saw this video the, the other day by uh, Gigi Young about DNA modification, ESP, and psychic battles. And some of the things she's sharing in that video, I'll link it below, um, really confirmed to me personally why I think the Twin Flame phenomenon has taken place and why it's such an issue because basically what it boils down to is we've been etherically modified and DNA modified in such a way that we don't function properly anymore. Um, so you'll you'll hear about that in that video of hers um, but my take on it is because of that, we are primarily geared automatically before all the mental subliminal programming that we get from childhood on upwards. But we're programmed to operate only out of the bottom three chakras. That's how they've set this thing up for us to keep us kind of trapped. And you think about it too, with the kind of programming that they use against us, it's to accentuate the worst aspects of those bottom three chakras, which is going to be from the root chakra, that's the fight or flight survival. You know, you can't think of anything beyond that, and that traps a lot of people. Uh, from the uh, Seiko chakra, it's about sex, sex sells. <laughs> sex about everything, everything has to be sexy or sex driven or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in a very unbalanced and unhealthy way. Um, and then uh, the third chakra, uh, the solar chakra, that's about your willpower. Now that pulls you right into your willpower, your power to create, your power to express, your power to, to be you in the world. So it's like, that's where you get into the whole power play. Are you going to be the one exerting your power? Or are you going to allow other people to exert their power over you? This is where we get the whole unhealthy um, power play dynamics that aren't really um, the balanced give and take of a true relationship. Uh, of recipro reciprocus. I'm saying it wrong. Reciprocus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Let me drink more coffee. Mm. I'm still going to say it wrong. I still want to say reciprocity, and that's, I'm making that word up. That word doesn't exist. <laughs> it's not reciprocal. There we go. <laughs> yes. So, because kind of what um, I was seeing was, how do you pull people on to the spiritual path when they are locked into fight and fl fight or flight mode? over sexualization about everything especially relationships and that toxic i must dominate before you dominate me and then it's just a give and take someone's always dominating that's really not a relationship so how do you pull them onto a spiritual path so that they can heal all that crap twin flame concept yay <laughs> fuck oh man so the other thing too that I was seeing, um, and I can't wait for us to get like truly telepathic in like a healthy, balanced way. Um, I know some people are sort of, sort of becoming telepathic with those that they're very close to. So I don't have anyone to do that with yet, but um, I can't wait until as a community we're all telepathic. Cause like, I want to give you a visual that's in my head and I can't give it to you with the concept. And it's just much more accurate when you can just give the whole thing in one package <laughs> one of these days so um like the visual i was getting about this when you think about it from the day that okay the human body is like i've mentioned this before the human body is a stargate 
of consciousness for your consciousness to go elsewhere and for other consciousness consciousnesses to meet up with yours um, that happens often in dream time and the astral plane that happens even during your waking moments when you're not aware of it when you're channeling when you're connecting with spirit there's a lot there go research CIA white papers on gateway processes and that will enlighten you as to all the research that's already been done and made public that proves that. There's lots of other stuff that proves it. But anyways, you're like a Stargate. <laughs> so you're a Stargate that is able to connect with other Stargates. And everyone's kind of in their own toroidal bubble, creating their own reality and viewing the greater reality that the mass of people around you are agreeing to, which is why you've only got certain people in your general surroundings as opposed to people that are not. <laughs> so you become like a vector point, a nodal point. And what I'm seeing is almost like a spider web, but it's like the web, the, the, the web strings are like energy lines. So from the moment you're born, you've got two main strings, your mother and your father. You are directly connected to them energetically, you know, for survival reasons and um, DNA blood wise, because your DNA is like an antenna in your body. So you're always Wi-Fi connected to them. Same thing goes for your brothers and sisters, for your extended family. And then you start getting more connections. You know, you start getting friends. Uh, teachers and other um, adult figures that are important to you that you connect with that um, you know that have an influence and a major impact on your life and then there's you know the, the people that you love that you choose and then it goes even further beyond and like each of these further beyond relationships they're still energetic strings but they're all, but they're like thinner and weaker they're not as established and so the more weaker ones are like people that we see and know about and that we connect with, uh, with the things they say or the things that they do, but you don't experience them firsthand usually. It's like people who write books, artists, um, musicians, politicians, people you see on TV, maybe like you're seeing me, I would be like a really thin string possibly for you like that. So these are all like, and you're the nodal point, you're the one center that's anchoring all these things and all these things are unique to you. So when you think about it, if you're only operating in that toxic frame of the lower three chakras, pri uh, predominantly, you are a dead weight energetically and you are pulling down everyone that's connected to you. Cause these are all relationships. Even if you have no contact with any of these people directly anymore, <laughs> These are still energetic, emotional, mental relationships that are still a part of your beingness as long as you have your conscious, aware beingness in the body. So, so this is why it's so important um, with the whole twin flame thing because essentially what it all, all boils down to, it's never about the other person. It's always and only about you. It's always and only about you and your state of health and what that's doing for all these other connections. Are you the dead weight anchor pulling everyone down? Or as you like heal and as you, you know, you elevate yourself, you start healing yourself and um, communing with your inner child and listening to what it needs, communing with your body and listening to what it needs, because your body is a completely separate consciousness from the spirit soul that is emanating from it. Honestly. <laughs> so you got to listen to it and give it what it needs. And sometimes it'll, you know, get your attention if you're not. I haven't been very hectic or crazy, but personally, I sprained my ankle the night before last. And so I'm like sitting with an ice pack on my <laughs> right ankle right now. So, and I still got to get up and go do shit because, you know, I'm a single mom. So no one's going to do it but me. So, yeah, so there's kind of like this whole, you need to slow down anyways, that my body's trying to tell me, so. <sighs> Fun time. Anyways, um, 
Yeah. So you have to like lift yourself and elevate yourself and heal yourself and free yourself of the toxic nodal points, the people who are stargates for really, really toxic negative shit. Because it's everyone's job to clean their own shit up. It doesn't matter how close they are to you, how much you love them. And honestly, if you've slept with this twin flame person and you're a woman, we bear a larger burden, I think. Um, fun fact. <laughs> they recently discovered that, you know, um, the woman's body will hold on to the DNA of the males she slept with. It still can be found in, I think, in her blood circulatory system. And I forget where else, but it's still in you. Those are little mini antennas connecting you to that person that may be far gone from your life. So, your influence on them, telepathically, energetically, emotionally, may be kind of nil, but their influence on you is going to be more powerful because as a woman, we receive. That's just how we're set up, unfortunately. <laughs> physiologically, you know. I'm talking specifically physiologically. That's how the female body is set up, and that's how it predominantly operates, even if you don't identify with the female energy. That's fine, but this is how your body works. So, energetically, um, what they're doing is always going to have a little bit more of an impact on you, especially if you're empathic. Especially if you're empathic. So, it is your duty to yourself to heal yourself, protect yourself, and if it's pretty clear to you that they have no, whoever this individual is, that they have no intents of operating out of a more healed and a reciprocal uh, attitude <laughs> with you, relational-wise, whether it's intimate or not, then you need to cut them out and let them deal with their own shit. Because as long as they have access to you, and as long as you're le letting them rent space in your head and in your heart, they are sucking you of energy. You are powering up their bullshit in every way, shape, and form that it takes place. So that's a big one. Females, fellow females, <laughs> biological females. <laughs> okay, I'm getting weird. <clears throat> yeah. So, but here's the thing, if you heal yourself and you start cutting off the people who are anchors and stop dragging them along with your energy and powering them up in their bullshit, let them face the music for themselves in whatever it is. Quit saving everyone. Save yourself first. Save yourself first. Stop abandoning yourself. Start imagining yourself as that five to ten year old inner child that you are. And asking yourself in the mornings, what do you need? Like when you go into meditation or prayer or whatever. Um, start asking yourself, what do you need? And then ask, what does my body need? And then how can you work with the spirit together? You know, start asking yourself these things and seeing, you know, what comes to you. You'll start to get inspired and guided. And sometimes memories or something will come to the fore. And it'll be something that you need to like feel let out and release, and then clear. So I will refer you back to my um, video I made about the uh, prayer of transmutation, the Ho'oponono. Hono, I'm probably saying that wrong. I have to see it to say it properly because <laughs> I always end up stumbling over it for some reason. So, yeah. Oh, well. Maybe I should go to Hawaii next. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, because I found that to be very effective for that, for the healing aspect, for the releasing, and for um, the wave of emotions that, because, you know, usually as a child or, you know, when you're used to being in abusive relationships or unbalanced relationships, you don't let yourself feel to a greater extent what's what you're really feeling. There's a whole lot of avoidance and cover up and um, muting that perception, capability with whatever we mute it with. Sex, drugs, rock and roll music, you know, whatever. Maybe that's why they came up with that. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Muting 
your perceptive capacities and keeping you in balance. Overexcited, overstimulated. Go, go, go. Never stop and consider or sit with an emotion or anything, you know. Yeah, it's kind of dark. But anyways, I'm tangenting. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Um, yeah. But if you do these things for yourself, you heal yourself, you start letting these things go, you become like the, uh, the nodal point that rises. You become like the tent pole that all these strings are attached to, and you just keep rising. And so the people that are still attached to you, that are worth your time, energy, and investment, and that you do, you know, care and love you, care about and love you and have your best interests at heart overall, um, you start to lift them. So it becomes like this reciprocal, unintentional, but reciprocal, you give appreciation and love for yourself. And it's also easier for you to give appreciation and love for all these other people. And then there's you're already um, doing the reciprocal relationship thing with them. It begins to fill and this lifts you more and it lifts them more. And together you all start raising consciousness like a tent pole, you know, raising the whole wave of everyone attached to you. And then the more that they do it, they can do it for themselves too. And everyone attached to them. And this is how you get the whole oh, 100th monkey effect. We are flying high into the sky like we should be as dragons. <laughs> I don't know why I like that so much. Cosmic eggs and dragons. Hmm. I saw a video the other day about, um, with Mark Attenwood, he was interviewing the dragon lady. Oh my God. I want to get one of her dragon organite pieces. They're gorgeous. But I like that because actually, um, I encountered a white dragon when I was, I, it's like an old video. I got rid of a lot of like weird old videos, but some of them I saved when I first started this channel, before I started actually putting myself like out there. And um, one of them I was watching a cloud and it literally turned into a dragon on camera and then smiled at me like a real big toothy grin. It was a white dragon and it's really obvious. <laughs> it was cool as hell. But um, yeah, maybe I should see about talking to them during my quiet spiritual me time and see what comes through. That'd be cool. Yeah. Okay, so that's me. Anyways. So those were just some insights I was having this morning about the whole thing and why twin flames is a thing. You're really just supposed to be finding your own inner flame. And then, um, oh, another thing someone was saying, I can't remember who it was, but, um, I'll link the Mark Antonwood interview below. You'll see. It's really cool. Anyways, um, someone was saying, too, about how your inner child is the portal. Your direct portal to spirit. So the healthier and more connected you are to your inner child, the more healing and acknowledgement you give it and allow that heart-centered inner child wisdom to, like, steer you the more you're like really in tune with spirit. I forget who said that. Somebody was pointing that out. And I was like, oh, yes. Because like I always figured like, you know, you come to your zero point and your inner child sort of guides you towards spirit. But the inner child being the inner portal. So that's like the secret portal within the Stargate portal that you are overall. That's like the spiritual portal. And the Stargate portal of your body is just your overall universal, um, universal portal. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if that's not too confusing, I hope it's not. Anyways, I wish I could give you the image, though, of that whole nodal point thing. Because that really, ah, oh, it just clarified it for me so well. Yeah. So anyways, um, I hope you're having... A very blessed and awesome Thursday. Speaking favor and serendipity upon your lives to guide you into highest wisdom, greatest soul expression, and uh, the most joyous love for you and all of yours. And talk to you later. Twilight Miss out.